Roddy, Roddy Piper, you, you know, we became friends when I broke in and we traveled. He, uh, he kind of like took me under his wing. They were wild. They were wild. Uh, Killer Tim Brooks was there and Roddy and Killer lived together on the other edge of town and I used to uh, go over there and hang with them. And uh, it got pretty wild, you know. It was... Big party scene or? Oh yeah, oh yeah, always, <laughs> always, drugs and alcohol. Everything was a party. The whole business was a party. And back in my early days in wrestling, uh, if you weren't a partier, you would kind of got brushed to the side. Because everybody that was that was making money, that was on top, they were all partiers. They were all pushing the envelope. All of them did. The ones that didn't, the ones that actually had strong norms, strong morals, those guys, it was like they didn't belong in the business, just and everything. And I'm about that same time the cops have been called. So I grab Buddy, and I'm beating the heck out of Buddy on his fireplace. And, uh, so there's four or five cops standing over me, going, Matt, let him up, Matt, let him up, you know. they. It, was, it wasn't like it would be today, you know. Right. I'd been tasered, or, you know, I, he was a wild man. He was a wild man. He, uh, he was nuts. He was crazy. Love you. Buzz, you know, you, you, uh, the stuff, you know, when you do it in the excess, and the way that Buzz would do it, you know, you do things that you normally wouldn't do. You know? Buzz was a great guy. I, I've seen Buzz, I was coming back from Richmond, Virginia with Buzz to Charlotte um, one night and there was a tractor trailer that it went off of an overpass and it was down and there was a fire in the cab of this truck and Buzz, we pulled over and Buzz went down there, tried to save this guy, but the door wouldn't open and the Buzz watched this guy burn up. Make this stop at, at this, dealer's house, and I'm picking up some coke, right? This was, a, this was a, people sitting around in the living room, and I, I'm getting my stuff, and, and they're all talking, and they're all high, and everything, and I hurry up, hurry up, I got, I got Andre the Giant out in the car, and they're all laughing, yeah, sure you do. Huh. People sitting around in the living room, and I, I'm getting my stuff, and, and they're all talking, and they're all high, and everything, and I hurry up, hurry up, I got, I got Andre the Giant out in the car, and they're all laughing, yeah, sure you do. Huh. And we're all asleep, going on the freeway. All of us, or two. He's driving, oh. and he, he sideswipes, rides at the guardrail, and it's like a cliff, probably 200 feet down. And uh, he's riding that guardrail. We all go out and work. I can never understand how he can do that, you know, just for himself, for his own comfort zone, you know, to be in the ring. I sure in the heck wouldn't want to be out there with somebody that was smoking crack. You know, giving my body to somebody that was all... Right. 120 days straight on the road, without a day off, it's rough. You know, some problems happened and um, I had knocked this guy out and he lost his, I believe he lost his eye. And uh, went back to the dressing room and everything was great. I was like a hero, you know, um, Bill Watts. Use me as an example. This is what you. This is how you take care of the business. You know, that is, uh, but anyway, it came out to uh, that a lot of problems came out of that. Bill Watts lost his license in Monroe for a period of time. And got sued. Duggan got sued, and I was gone. You know, and actually, I I'm the one that did the damage, which I got to carry with me for the rest of my life. But. Um, all of a sudden, I was a bad guy. You know? No, you just had to watch. Sometimes coming back, if you had to walk underneath a, a balcony or something, you know, grab a chair and hold it over your head. You never know what's going to come down on you. After the show, uh, went to the airport, and uh, Roddy and I uh, were flying back to Portland that night. <laughs> and uh, it was wild. So I go from uh, Madison Square Garden to the airport fly to Portland, we get off the plane, and a uh, girlfriend of mine pick, picked us up, went back to my place, and then we go get some drugs, right? Buzz had problems with Hogan, 
back steroid related. Buzz owed him money for steroids from before I even knew Buzz. And uh, somehow Buzz and I were put in the same picture a lot of times, you know. I think he wanted to see that I had clear eyes, you know. And to, wanted to make sure I was gonna be ready to go and go out there and perform to the best of my ability. And I said, I looked him right in the eye, I go, yeah, yeah, I'm good to go, yeah. It's just like, but I can, looking back, I can see he was a bit nervous. But Frank and I were really good friends. In fact, a month before he died, I picked him up at the airport. And he's, he's riding with me and he, he tells me, he says, Matt, they want to cut me. I said, what are you talking about? They want to cut me because he was like eating the guys up, you know, and uh, they were afraid to work with him or something. Abby and I had some great matches. I had great matches with Abby. Uh, I loved working with him, you know. Um, if, um, he had some issues, you know, when he got drunk. Had some problems, some some, some legal problems, but it was the alcohol. So you seen the early signs when he would get drunk and have rages and. Oh yeah, he, that's what it would happen. He would, because he was an easygoing guy, sober, and he'd he would start drinking and he would rage. Huh. You're looking at him. I mean, so, so I guess that means you're the toughest guy in the country, huh? And he says, "Yep, that's what they say." And he was serious as a heart attack. You know, I, laying on his back on the bed. Sags opens the door, and Shamrock just busts open, busts in, and jumps on Brian starts pounding him. So I went to the hospital and uh, I went in. I don't know why they even let me in. You know, I just said I know him, blah blah blah. So I went in, I see him sitting there and his head's like this. I didn't even, couldn't even recognize him. And uh, I had to reconstruct this bunch of bones in his face were all messed up. The wink thing was thrown at me. Watched a lot of Batman. Right. I watched a lot of Cesar Romero. Joker. That's pretty much it. I, I had problems because Steve Kern kind of went behind my back to try to. Because Steve Kern and I kind of look alike. We back then we maybe more so you know I haven't seen, but we looked alike, and uh, people thought that he was me sometimes or I was him, and uh, so. You know, he he kind of, without even asking me how I felt about it, you know, he was trying to push, because he was doing that other gimmick. What was his gimmick? Skinner. Skinner. You know, he wanted to be a doink. And I, I, I sounds a phenomenal piece of talent, you know. Um, he used to get on my nerves, though. So he got on my nerves. As far as why? <laughs> <laughs> and Scott Hall and was, you know, there was, you know, the, BS in the dress room. Scott Hall was like bad mouthing me and saying, calling me a snitch. And uh, what is he talking about? So Scott, I had uh, Mike McGurk and Luna and I were smoking some uh, weed in the hotel. And, uh, bam Bam. You know, Bam Bam called Vince. You know, told him about it. I was fired. Um, yeah, I uh, not well at all. I uh, kind of isolated and uh, got a whole bunch of cocaine. And I uh, so I got fired. And my wife of one year and my daughter that was a year old, they went back home from Oregon. I was in Oregon when I when I when I was fired. So I flew back to Columbus. I was living in Columbus, and my wife was in uh, up in Michigan. She came back down. I'd been home about four or five hours. She uh, woke me up the next morning and picked a fight with me. And I so I left, and I was gone about four or five hours. And I went back, and she was gone. You know, with this uh, with this discus. And Carrie was a real, you know, a really big-hearted guy, right. you know, especially if you catch him before he started getting high. Thank <laughs> you.